Hi everybody, Jonathan here, and thank you so much for attending my recent webinar if you're able to make it today. But I thought it would be nice to repurpose the videos from my YouTube channel um, so that for those of you all over the world who weren't able to make the 11 a.m. GMT webinar this morning, um, you can watch this at your leisure. So this is the very first of three videos, so do make sure you subscribe and put the bell on so they get all three videos as I release them over the next few weeks. The very first one is going to talk about real-time rendering within Vectorworks. The second one, we're going to focus on real-time rendering with Vectorworks and Twinmotion. And then the third one you'll be blown away by is Vectorworks and Enscape together for real-time rendering. So make sure you join the channel to unleash your creativity and power up your productivity with Vectorworks, Twinmotion and Enscape. Thanks for watching everybody and enjoy the videos. Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here and welcome to Unleashing Your Creativity and Power Up Your Productivity. We're going to be exploring 3D workflows with Vectorworks 2024, Twinmotion and Enscape. So the agenda today is we're going to give an overview of Vectorworks 2024 3D capabilities. We're also going to look at some of the exciting features of Twinmotion as well and unveiling the power of Enscape for real-time rendering. We'll give some live demonstrations of 3D modeling, some Vectorworks, Twinmotion, and a bit of Enscape as well. And then we'll finish off with some questions and answers at the end of the session. So I do hope you enjoy the session and let's get started. So just before we get started, a little bit about myself. My name is Jonathan Reeves. I'm an architect and I established my firm in 2000, so quite a while ago now. As well as that, I'm also a director of Jonathan Reeves CAD, which is a CAD training and visualization sort of focused company and also real time rendering as well, which is where I sell Twinmotion and Enscape and training as well for those softwares. So as well as being a practicing architect in the UK for 20 years, um, I've also been training and teaching Vectorworks, Enscape and Twinmotion as well. And it's something that I'm really passionate about and I teach all over the world via Zoom. Um, I've also been a top reseller for Vectorworks in the UK for many, many years and also uh, for Twinmotion and Enscape too. And um, finally, I've written a couple of books, uh, Innovative Vectorworks BIM back in 2015, and more recently, Revolutionize Your Rendering with Twinmotion as well. And finally, um, I've got a popular YouTube channel called at Jonathan Reeves CAD. We've nearly got 16,500 subscribers now. I'd uh, love to see some of you join if you're not joined up already, and I look forward to seeing you join the channel. So let's move on to the summary of our talk and how we're gonna get started on this presentation. So in the realm of architectural design, the integration of advanced 3D workflows has become a transformative force, pushing through the boundaries of creativity, collaboration, and visualization. This presentation is gonna explore a little bit about how architects can harness the power of Vectorworks 2024, Twinmotion, and also Enscape to enhance your design process and bring your visions to life. So the thing is about Vectorworks, it basically serves as the foundation for all my architectural creativity. It offers amazing 3D uh, workflow capabilities and really, really streamlined uh, 2D drafting as well as 3D and BIM workflows. Architects can now design with precision and efficiency, leverage the features. Um, we also got really enhanced collaboration tools like project sharing and referencing as well. I also want to look at how we can kind of synergize with real-time rendering and project sharing. So Twinmotion and Enscape are real-time rendering softwares, and these basically have taken architectural visualization to new heights. Uh, with its real-time rendering capabilities, these tools enable you things like ray tracing, high-quality materials and lighting, uh, advanced vegetation tools, and also they enable architects to create very immersive photorealistic experiences uh, for your clients. And we'll see how this works out um, and how they work with Vectorworks. So let's get started on the very first uh, slide. And you'll notice the first thing is I'm gonna be using Vectorworks to present to you today. So if I go to my new first slide, I just wanna talk a tiny bit about the home screen and the new interface of Vectorworks 2024. Okay, so we're gonna start off talking about the home screen and the new interface of Vectorworks 2024. 
Now just to begin with, let's talk about the home screen. So if you click up onto the corner here, and you'll see that you can actually bring up the Vectorworks home screen. Now this is a really great place to start and you can see all the different files that I've been practicing on today ready for this talk for you. Um, so it's a really, really nice way to see all the files listed, how big the file size is, uh, when you last worked on them, and of course the path of how you would find them as well. So really useful information. There's also a bit of messaging from Vectorwitz over here with some sample files and what's new features. And then down the side, we've got the learning tab with Vectorwitz University Access, Cloud Services, and the Message Center. Down at the bottom, you've also got the customer portal, the community forum, and finally tech support. So when you're ready, you can either click new or you can simply click on any of the files to access them. I've actually got the files open, some of them, so I can actually just close that down as well. So let's talk about the new interface that was brought in with 2024 Vectorworks. You'll notice that there is quite a nice clean new interface and some of the icons are definitely a little bit different to the ones you had before in previous software. So what I would recommend is it does take a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of setting up, but once you do, it's a really, really nice uh, new benefit of the workspace here. So click up onto this cog, you'll notice that we've actually got three modes for the bar. We've got a regular mode, um, and this is the regular mode here. There's quite a lot of blank space here, but that's because I've actually kind of turned off uh, things like the text and the snapping. Now I prefer personally to have the snapping down at the bottom where it always was. And also I don't really feel the need for the text, although it is quite nice to have it here with the previews of the fonts. Um, I find that I'm happy with it up in the menu bars instead. So if you want to do that, you can just click here and turn off the text as well. Now, rather than having this wasted space, I would recommend that you work in compact mode for the workspace. So that spreads everything out really nicely, as you can see across the top. So the second element that you're going to want to click on is the button number under below. It's called the Quick Preferences Settings. And what I would recommend with this is to begin with, just enable all of these little pins in blue, just to bring up all the various options. Now, once you know what some of these do, you can disable some of these and turn them off. What's really nice is, even if they're not um, active, you can basically enable them from the top here. Um, for example, let me just go onto a blank file. So here we go, I can go into normal uh, black background or white background, do things like turn the grid on and the page boundary and the rulers. All of these things can be done quite easily, but I can also go into the options here and click the show grid and turn the dark background off as well. So I really, really like this flexibility. Finally, if you do want to, uh, just pop into your Vectorworks preferences. And as usual, these require a little bit of setting up. Uh, one of the things I do really love is the new scalable icons. And that was one of the big reasons for the change behind Vectorworks interface in 2024. As well as to make it cleaner and look a bit nicer, it was these scalable uh, SVG icons that Vectorworks were keen to share. And we get a lot more consistency between Mac and Windows as well with this new interface. So if you want to find out more about setting up the interface, reach out to me uh, for a bit more information or watch some of my other videos. I've got plenty on this as well. Good. Okay, so next up after the new interface, which I'm sure you'll agree is a really nice refreshing change. And there's a lot more depth to it than I've shown you, but I've just shown you a brief glimpse into some of those new features. It is basically the ability to have some really nice new 3D graphics. So I'm going to go on to this slide here. And this is a little demonstration of the file I did a little while ago that I think is quite fun to demo with, just to show you some of the new amazing rendering features that Vectorwitz now has built in. So if I hover over this little link here, you'll be pleased to know that this is something called a hyperlink, which you can find down in your Dims and Notes palette if you're interested. And basically you can access this and what it will basically do is open up a file or open a document or even things like a QR code. So this is how I'm actually using this to launch a file when I hold the command key and basically open my file from that little link, which is very, very cool. Okay, so we're in dark mode at the moment and let's go back to our top plan. And basically I just want to show you this little project and show you how we can work with this project here. So this is a little uh, cafe I modeled up just quickly in one of my sort of tutorials. You can see at the moment, I've just got a clip cube in there as well. Now, if I go onto the first view, 
This is what I call the white card rendering with a little bit of ambient occlusion. So if you're interested in how I've done this, just go down into shaded options and you'll notice I've pretty much disabled absolutely everything. So I've turned off all of the textures and colors, even things like shadows as well, um, and also the edges. So there's quite a few things I could turn back on here, but let's click OK and move on to the next slide. So I'm going to go on to the next one, which is called a cartoon rendering. Now this is just a save view. So if we have a look into the settings for this one, you'll notice that now I've actually turned on the textures and the colors and the aliasing, but not yet shadows. And I've drawn the edges, but I've drawn them really, really thick at sort of a kind of pixels of five to make it look quite sort of graphical and cartoony. Okay, so that's a nice little kind of cartoon type setting. Let's move back to shaded only. Okay, so this one basically looks a bit more realistic, you'll notice. Um, visit into the shaded options will show you that we've basically turned off the edges, that's the main thing, and basically we've turned on some shadows as well. So I've got a bit of shadowing coming in from the outside. Let's click OK and we'll move on to the next option here. So here I'm going to go to shaded options with all the settings on. Now I think you'll agree this is starting to look really, really good. Um, and I've just done a little keyboard shortcut here, which is basically hidden my palettes just to give you that lovely widescreen view as well. So if you're interested in that little keyboard shortcut, just go up to Window Palettes and you'll notice that I've actually enhanced my workspace as I always do and uh, programmed in a keyboard shortcut for auto hiding my docked palettes there. Now what's really nice about this is I can also go up to the mode bar and go on to auto hide for the top bar as well. So I get a very, very clean sheet for pre presenting when I'm uh, not doing any work. And basically when I move up to the top, I'll get my toolbar back. And when I go down to the sides, they will slide out on both sides and you'll see that I can still access the tools as required. So nice little tip on how you can present with that to works as well. So let's take a look at the settings for where we are with this shaded options. So you can see now I've got everything turned on apart from the edges to get that nice realistic look. The most important one is really the object and environmental reflections. And look how immediately Vectorworks can impose these straight away. So let's start with the object reflections. This is where you get things like reflectivity in the chrome and the table. The environmental reflections really makes a difference and that's where the floor is now reflecting a bit of the environment. And then finally, the environmental lighting has a little bit of an effect uh, depending on the HDRI or the lighting that you have within your scene. There are a couple of other settings I just want to touch on as well. And basically, if we go into lighting options, you'll notice here I've got an overall kind of brightness so I can kind of brighten or darken the scene depending on what I want to achieve. I've also got this very nice little effect called ambient occlusion. And you'll notice what that does, it kind of brings out a little bit of depth of shadow in the corners and where sort of junctions meet. And basically you can play around with that ambient occlusion uh, as required. So those little settings really, really enhance the view, I think. If you compare where we were, let's just go back one step. There we go, that was looking good, I think. But you know, once you see all the reflections and stuff on, I think you'll agree that looks even nicer. So finally, what I'm gonna do is go into my uh, number five view. And in this particular one, I've actually turned on a layer called lighting. So here we go, if we turn off the lighting, you'll see the difference it makes. And um, when I turn the lights on, you'll see it really lights up the space and I've got these lovely colored lights. Now you're not actually seeing the lights themselves right at the moment. And that's because I've got a setting where I'm only showing those in wireframe. If I did put them on, uh, in all ways, you would actually see these coloured lights and sort of, you know, a bit distracting, but that's quite useful because I can actually select those and basically go in and then adjust things like the brightness and so on as well. So let's go back to uh, the mode where we were. I think I'm just going to go back and put that back on to showing the light turned off. Only in wireframe. Okay, fantastic. So we're almost there with this little demonstration. Um, and I now want to talk about some of the brand new features that were introduced in 2024. Okay, so let's go on to this next slide. And you'll notice that we've now got depth of field. And this is something that Vectorworks introduced with the new version of 2024. So to find that, you're gonna to need to go into your shaded options and just go to camera settings. 
And you can see that we can enable or disable the depth of field quite straightforwardly. What's nice is you can also set the uh, distance, the blur distance as well. So if you do want to play around with that, you can basically go, you can click set focus. For example, click on that table and that puts that into focus very, very nicely. We can also uh, do a couple of other tricks here. We've got um, something called exposure adjustment. And this is a bit like a camera with the ISO shutter speeds. Basically, we can kind of drop these down to different levels and we can also adjust the shutter speed to basically put more light into the camera. Let's just go down a bit and darken that down. You've also got a lot of control with things like the f-stop values as well. So if you're a keen photographer, this will really, really kind of please you. And it does mean that you can kind of really brighten or darken the image, just adjust things like the camera lens as well. Finally in here, as well as the depth of field, we've got something called bloom. And this is a nice little extra effect that you can basically apply. If I increase it to maybe 50 and click OK, you'll notice it's got a slightly sort of bloomy uh, feel to it here. So let me just go back to my shaded only view. You can see how straightforward this looks compared to where we were afterwards with a bit of bloom and lighting and other things as well. So a lot of flexibility in the new rendering as well. Finally, one really feature that I really love is we've now got the animation camera. This has been around for a little while, but basically I can activate the particular view for that camera. And when I'm ready, I can actually click play and play in real time using shaded rendering, all in Vectorworks 3D. Uh, and it's got a great sort of little rendering built-in software that you can leverage within your software. So thank you so much for watching the first part of this webinar series uh, from my webinar, Unleashing Your Creativity with 3D for Vectorworks, Enscape and Twinmotion. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you do, make sure you like and subscribe and you'll get the next ones. Thanks for watching everybody, see you next time, bye bye.